Hey guys, Mike here with Right Amount of Campy. Okay, so this time around, I'm just continuing to work on that cabin that's going to go into the uh, living quarters of the camper. Um, I wasn't okay with the way the dados and the rabbits turned out, so what I ended up doing is just trying to reinforce it. Initially, I tried just doing it using the uh, pocket hole system again. Unfortunately, it quickly was apparent that this wasn't going to work out as the screws just came through the other side um, so I ended up opting with just simple uh, wood screws reinforcing it um, through the joints themselves I screwed that up all right, so this is where I screwed up. I uh, I don't know where I did my measurements wrong, but I added a whole extra inch to the board. Um, it can't be the extra, I must have mismeasured something, because, yeah, anyways. It's uh, 12 inches in the back all the way up, and I did, this thing is 13 inches. Which means I have two options. Rebuild the whole cabinet or go ahead and just fix the shelf here. Um, which honestly probably be the fastest. Just take those off, take an inch off of each one, probably an inch and a quarter and go ahead and refit this again. This is also where I make the small change to the design. I had four dividers on the bottom shelf there. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to three. So I'll have one on each side plus the one in the middle. Now, uh, one thing I did not think about when I was making it the first time around was the fact that I'd have um, an inch gap. So to offset that, I'm also gonna go ahead and put in additional uh, one inch well, wall supports essentially up the inside of that wall just to have something to attach both those dividers to as well as the shelf. I just want to help my past self explain what I'm talking about. Um, if I were to go ahead and just screw those side walls or side dividers back into the wall, um, the, the cabinet itself doesn't have a support to sit on. So what I'm doing here is actually putting in the half inch, or I'm sorry, one inch supports in here um, to match with the rest of the wall supports, which will allow me to first of all have an anchor point for the cabinet itself to be screwed into, plus the dividers will be sitting underneath the cabinet as well. Okay. So, kind of keep in mind with these, 
um, the actual length of the supports isn't as important as the uh, thickness of the spars themselves. So I've got to make sure that it's still an inch thick. Um, and it looks like if I just make every one 14 for simplicity, uh, I'll be fine.
Now remember, most people actually don't build a wall structure on their walls like I did. Um, I didn't really have a good reason for it. I just didn't know better. I thought this might be easier. Frankly, if you can afford it, um, if you have to know how, just do layered plywood. That's going to be so much easier than doing all these wall mounts and everything. I got six wall mounts here. I'm going to be putting those into up the side of the shelf. Um, they will support both the shelf dividers on the bottom as well as give me the uh, needed structure for when I do the cedar wall paneling later to actually have something to nail those guys into. So, um, alright. All right, I'm back. Just a quick little tip here, something I learned. Um, if you have a pre-drilled piece of wood, and you have already have holes at each end, and you're afraid that you're just gonna overshoot, or you're gonna have to re-drill because of what you have to cut off, just two half on each end. Sometimes you'll be able to go ahead and reuse the holes you already drilled in. Oh. Perfect. Now, I realize this is ugly as sin. Um, things aren't necessarily straight. Things aren't pretty looking. Just keep in mind, this is all gonna be covered with cedar panels. So who cares? Um, it just needs to be functional. So complete squareness, even though preferred, if it's not 100% there, as long as it's supporting the top rafters, who cares? Wood not matching, who cares? Didn't make each board flat, who cares? It doesn't make a, it doesn't change the support aspect. Once all the cedar panels is in, you won't be able to tell the difference. So these guys are rock solid. I can put any, I can screw everything I need to. And if you don't feel quite strong enough, you can always pop in a couple of screws from the back to help you out as well. I do want to go ahead and um, kind of re-explain what I just said in my little rant there. Uh, yes, the I do believe that the wall supports don't have to be perfect, but I don't use mixed match wood. Um, it's all pine lumber from the local um, big box store. Don't mix hardwood and softwood together. The growth might change, or the, the growth of the wood later can cause some issues there. Um, it's all pine, it's just the colors are different, some of it's a little aged more than the others, but overall it's the same, it's the same species of wood. Transitioning into uh, screwing in that middle divider, um, all I'm doing is trying to measure out the center. I used the phone to calculate and all that stuff. Um, big thing is the reason I went from four dividers into three was mostly for aesthetics purposes. I just kind of felt that if I used four dividers, but for some reason they didn't line up properly with the cabinet and something, it just might just look odd. So cutting it down from three to four, or I'm sorry, from four to three, um, I'll just have the outside and the center and I won't have to worry about that whole misbalance type deal.
Hey folks, all right, so today's plan is a little different from what I initially had. Uh, unfortunately, even though the sun is shining right now, um, they're saying there's a chance of rain pretty much all day long. So instead of pulling the camper out of the garage and working on finishing the cabinet, I'll go ahead and leave the camper inside the garage and just kind of start running the wires uh, to the roof. Okay, so what you see here is the couple of wires that we pulled through to the front of the um, camper. That's the, the plugs that will go into the living cabin or the sleeper cabin, as well as the 12 volt that will be in the uh, galley. Uh, the goal here is just to run them through. Each one gets its own individual path through the ceiling spars. And I wanted to run those from the right hand side. I'm really just making sure there's enough space between the wall and the first hole. And then pretty much giving myself about an inch, an inch and a half for the each hole next to it. Uh, a couple of tips right off the bat. Um, something that would have made this a lot easier if I had it here would have been the brad point uh, drill bit. Just because the slippage is surreal. And two, um, I end up switching from using the green drill to the black and red drill, just because the black and red drill was just much smaller, allowing me better angles when I was going into these uh, bars here. As much as we all love a good cable salad, um, I did want to go ahead and try and keep this organized. So I also made sure that the ends of each one of these cables is also marked off with the masking tape, just telling me which cable belongs where. Um, the one thing I do suggest though, as you're going about this, is make sure you kind of have an idea as to where the cables are going to go. Um, you want to make sure, you want to try and just not have them overlapping each other, as that will mess with the thickness later for when you try and put the insulation in. So have them laid out nice and clean, everything is nice and flat, and just really pay attention to the matter of how you want to run those wires. Now don't forget that you will have to run the wire along the walls as well. Same rule applies, just put the, uh, just drill through the wall supports and make sure you just kind of navigate and route these wires in a way that where they stay nice and flat and take up and don't overlap each other in any way. Having the first wire put in, uh, one thing I have learned already, so I have to be careful with my angle of the drill. Obviously there's not enough room between each spar necessarily to put the drill in. Um, if the angle of the drill is too high, you'll end up putting a ding inside your ceiling. Um, I'll have to patch that up luckily again. Like with the walls, blemishes there aren't a huge deal because they'll be covered with um, foam panels. So. So you can see here how I've put, um, I almost drilled through it already. It does actually have a little bit of a small ding on the bottom of it. I'll sand it out, put a little bit of wood filler in it, it'll be fine. But just that being said, just be careful as to how you drill your holes. Um, I tried to drill it in from back here, which of course there's just none of space. Lifted the, the drill up way too high. So instead, I'll just do it from inside here. I should have done that initially. Stupid mistakes happen. Lesson learned, moving on. Now, if you look here, you'll see that during the cabinet build, 
I put in that extra spar right there. Um, so I do need to go ahead and drill through that also. Um, I should have anticipated that, but honestly, that's not a huge deal. But the cabinet, this is the piece that's going to go and feed in behind the cabinet underneath um, to give us USB ports to do, like, maybe watch tablet or something at night if it rains or something to that effect. And from inside, for now the cable's just gonna sit there because, as you can see, it's coming in from up there and it's gonna feed in behind the cabinet underneath here and then probably end up right about there. So I can put a USB box over here. There's gonna be the last and final cable. It's gonna be this one, which is gonna be going towards the center down there. Go ahead and give us a 12 volt plug just for like heating blankets and stuff like that. All right, well, this also wraps up the video for today. If you found value in this, um, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, our blog at rideamandacampy.net as well as our Instagram at rideamandacampy. Thank you for watching. See you next week.